Um, so this is the drop briefing. Um, it happens in the middle of every semester. Um, so uh, again, um, it is for people entering or thinking of entering Europe in January. Uh, there'll be another uh, briefing if you miss it uh, for the ones uh, entering in uh, April. Okay, so what is Europe? Europe is really simple. It's an undergraduate research program. It's just basically a really simple opportunity for you to work with a professor and their students to achieve research. And now that, uh, you know, computing is gathering more steam with uh, very high flying students, we feel there's going to be more opportunities for many of you to attach to professors to do cutting edge research. And this is really uh, one of the primary enrichment venues that we have in SOC. So that uh, especially for those of you who are thinking of doing research for a career, maybe aspiring to do a PhD, um, this is a good way to try it out. It's not a lot of cost. It's just basically um, two modules over one year, right? Uh, where you can try out uh, whether you like doing research and then see whether it's a good fit for you. Okay, so we are, happen to be lucky in Singapore that we have a lot of good faculty. You know, it's not just at N NUS, but also at NTU, uh, SUT, and S uh, SMU that uh, all do cutting edge research in computing. So um, we can take advantage of this uh, being students in our school. Uh, when I was an uh, undergraduate your age, many, many years ago, uh, we had a program that was only advertised to a select few, but uh, Europe is really for everyone in the school who would like to take a try at it. Okay. So what does that mean? Basically, research really involves a few uh, particular activities. These take time, though, and that's why Europe is a program that takes a whole year. OK, so typically you need to come up with a particular problem. You're trying to solve it, make it into uh, a, a good problem statement. OK, then after you have that problem statement, you have to figure out, OK, who's done things like this before? Uh, maybe they've done exactly the same problem. Often the times it's uh, a permutation of the problem that's related. Okay, uh, study how they solve the problem, and then uh, decide uh, how to connect those to your work. And sometimes that will be through research seminars. Like there are lots of cutting edge uh, researchers coming to NUS and Singapore, especially with Zoom now, it's very easy to invite people from overseas so they can give seminars and you can benefit from listening to them and understanding what they're doing. Okay, and then by uh, populating your ideas through reading papers as well as uh, listening to other people give talks and research seminars, then you can come up with your own idea about how to implement and solve a problem. You know, it could be something practical where there's a lot of coding involved. It could be something completely theoretical where it's just mathematical proofs and induction um, or, or something else in between. Okay, so a lot of things are like that. And then uh, the most important thing I think uh, a lot of people forget is that uh, they need to actually document and present their results. So um, that is by far the most important. Why? Because uh, research doesn't happen in a vacuum, right? If you do research and you don't communicate it to anyone, then is it research, right? So uh, very importantly, uh, you have to convince your examiners, meaning, meaning your examiner plus your supervisor, that uh, you've done a good job, okay? So um, that can uh, often be slightly complementary to what you might think of research. Like some people think, oh, I do a lot of coding. I run a lot of tests. Uh, that's research, okay? The research only happens when you are able to communicate it to other people and they are affected by the communication that you have given, okay? So very critical because at the end of the day, you're going to get a grade, right? How's the grade going to be determined? It's gonna be determined by an evaluation team, right? So that's really key. So make sure, uh, you, you don't uh, forget this point that is really, really important, okay? Okay. So uh, what you need to do is uh, basically uh, ensure that you're doing a good job in SLC, all right? How we judge that's a little bit um, simplistic. So we look to see whether you have uh, a minimum CAP of about 3.8. Okay, and um, at least 60 MCs of completed work, okay, uh, or in progress by the time of submission. So, for example, if you're applying for January and you've already got 40 MCs down and you're taking another 20, then you're available to take Europe, okay? Now, there's some caveats to that, okay, because Europe is a enrichment uh, module. It's not something that you're required to do. 
So th what does this mean? It means that we want you to have a very solid base where your outer studies and SOC are pretty much not bothering you. Okay, so why do I say there's a little bit of a caveat here? It's because, you know, your 60 MCs, you already know you have grade three first year, right? What happens if you ask a lot of things, right? Then to us as a signal, it could be that your foundations aren't that solid, right? And then going into your second year, you might feel like, okay, I actually have to do more work. And then even though you've done your up halfway, then you decide, I really can't manage the load. I would rather drop your up, okay? And that's no good for anyone, right? Because you don't have a, a, a fulfilling experience. The team supervising you also doesn't feel very good about it because they've invested their time to coach you. Right. So in these cases where we see a lot of S's on your transcripts from grade three first year, we may recommend that you come back and apply the next semester. OK, we need to have enough evidence from your actual grades that you're doing well enough that it becomes a useful enrichment activity. OK, does that make sense? So um, that's the only part where we have this, you know, approval by the CS and IS department. OK. If you satisfy the first two, by right, you can take your up already, okay? But if there are any warning signs from us to say, okay, maybe this person's not quite ready for it, and uh, you know they're still in their uh, second year, you know they're not in their third year already or something like that, then we might recommend that you just wait an extra semester, okay? Because we really want it to be a positive experience for you, okay? All right. So the timeline is really simple. Um, all of our project modules pretty much work the same way. All right. So there is a, a deadline for submission for the continuous report that's just submitted to the uh, supervisor as well as the main evaluator. Okay. So um, that has to be done uh, at the end of reading week uh, around that time. Okay. Where you have to first submit your report in week 12. So um, the week before, uh, two weeks before, and then present to your examiner uh, in reading week. So you get a gap of about two weeks to practice. Okay, so um, that's the first part. Um, then there is a final assessment, right, that happens uh, at the second week uh, of SEM 1. Okay, so I think the deadlines for this, yeah, is correct. So this is for a SEM 1 of the following year, right? So this would be around uh, week 12 of this semester is what you, when you would be presenting your final report, okay? So your first semester in Europe, if you take it in January, will be uh, week 12, week reading week of SEM 2, okay? Makes sense? So you're going the whole cycle for that, all right? And then um, reading week of SEM 1, again, just two weeks later, then you have your presentation again. So it's the same schedule, right? You have a report that's due in week 12, and then a presentation of that report to your examination team uh, two weeks later, okay? All right, and then after that, you get to tell us whether you're satisfied with your year up or not, or whether uh, you know, there's some improvements that you can suggest and that's done during uh, the first Monday after exams. Okay, so it's actually very easy the way that a year up is evaluated. There's only one main evaluator, another faculty member who happens to be knowledgeable in the same area as your supervisor, okay? And the uh, uh, evaluation duties are split evenly, okay? Your supervisor is assigning you 15% of your grade in the first semester of attachment, you know, which in this case would be SEM1, right? Uh, sorry, SEM2, and same with your uh, main evaluator. And then over the summer, you keep on progressing, and then SEM2, uh, SEM1 of the next AY, right? Your supervisor and your main evaluator will then, again, uh, assess for uh, the other 70%. Again, split equal, equal. All right? Very simple. Okay? There is a, a small caveat that almost never gets invoked. Okay, I just uh, say it here at the bottom, that uh, if the supervisor and main evaluator don't see that you're making a good amount of progress, um, they can decide to discontinue the Europe. Okay? More often than not, it's not the supervisor who invokes this. It's the student who says, you know, I can't handle my course load. You know, uh, I've talked with my supervisor. They're okay with me withdrawing, okay? Then you can stop, okay? But again, like I said, we would rather not be in that situation. We would rather you take the Europe, have a 
fantastic time doing research and then say, yeah, I want to continue or I want to try another area of research in my FYP, okay? Because if I do both for FYP and Europe, and perhaps I publish some work on that, it makes it a very easy case to get into graduate school, either here in Singapore or abroad, okay? That's, that's what we want to see, okay? All right, so how does the schedule work? It's actually very simple. Um, the, the Europe applications for next semester, meaning January intake, will open on October 3rd, okay? So you just can go to the uh, uh, online form here, okay? So I'll just open this up. It's a Microsoft form, so um, all you have to do is fill in the information that uh, comes on this form. All right, so you can see here, you write uh, the current academic term, so you could fill in, okay, I'm going to start uh, in uh, uh, 2022, okay, uh, second semester, let me blow this up, sorry, okay, uh, and then I, oh, so that's the current academic term, sorry, so it's 2021, uh, 2210, then my name, okay, I'll write my full name, then my student ID number, Okay, and then a contact number. Okay, uh, and then which program I am in. Okay, like computer engineering or something like that. If you happen to be listening to this and you're an exchange student, uh, you actually can do a Europe. Okay, but you have to be here for a whole year. If you are an exchange student and you're looking to do just a one semester project, I'll talk about that option later. That's not under Europe. Okay, cross faculty students can also take Europe, uh, but again, uh, there are specific things that apply to you. So if you have that particular case, you can either talk to me during uh, right after the briefing or write to us and we'll clarify that, okay? Year of study, most students are either in their year two or year three, okay? There are some year students that apply. And again, uh, we'll, we'll check whether you've done too many issues and we'll probably recommend that you take it in year two instead, okay? If you're a USP student, you can actually use your op to fulfill your ISM, which is your independent study modules. So if you're a USP scholar, uh, your op is one way to uh, satisfy that requirement. And if you know what type of uh, areas that you're interested in, let's say artificial intelligence, right? Uh, uh, area that I work in, then you might fill in that, you know, and the number of modules that you've already passed and the uh, number of modules that I'm currently doing, okay? So that's this form. Uh, you have to enter in your notional cap and uh, you have to un, uh, upload your unofficial transcript. So that means you have to go to the registrar, download a copy of your unofficial transcript. I will check it on my end again for all the criteria that we talked about. It does help if you've done some projects before. So for example, if you're already year two and you happen to have taken Orbital or any other type of uh, project mod, uh, that also helps to put in uh, to substantiate that you know how to deal with longer term deadlines. Okay, as you can already tell, Europe only has one deadline a semester, okay? One report in week 12, that's it, okay? So if you're not very good at structuring and decomposing this into smaller sort of like micro homework assignments, it's likely that you push off everything until week 10. And guess what? That's not a good sign because week 10, everyone is busy, right? There's nobody who's not busy in week 10, okay? So um, it's very important to have a good idea of how to structure your time long-term in order to meet the requirements for uh, Europe, okay? So um, I'm just gonna upload a file, I don't know, whatever. Uh, say, just pick something small, okay? Um, and then uh, write this in, 42.8, okay? And then submit this form. Okay, so the second part of the uh, page is really simple. You need to have a supervisor's name. So maybe I'll put myself here. Of course, you can't do that. You can't supervise yourself. And then uh, your email address for your supervisor and uh, a project number. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, a project title, and then uh, when you're planning to start. Okay, so something of this sort, okay? Uh, the last thing, very important, is your supervisor's approval email. So um, as a part of uh, doing Europe, you have to negotiate a project. So I'll talk about this later, okay? And after your supervisor, your intended supervisor said, okay, I'm happy to accept you as a Europe uh, student. You can attach a screenshot or an actual email, okay, a PDF or something of your supervisor's approval. Maybe she'll send you, um, you know, say, yeah, I'm, I certify 
this student is okay to take this project, okay? And then they sign off and then you just take a screenshot or, or a PDF of that, you can upload it here, okay? Once you submit this, then uh, Sue Ann will get it and then uh, I will then process the form and then you'll be all set, okay? If there's any questions, we'll dialogue most likely with both you and your supervisor about it. Okay, so I'm going to go back, just move this out of the way. Okay, so uh, once you submit it, it usually takes about two or three days at most, depends on whether it's a weekend or not. Uh, it's usually very fast. Um, we, we just check that your unofficial transcript is good and then uh, your supervisor does say okay, then we'll let it go through, okay? Um, then on the 11th, uh, your app application is closed. Yes, sir, you have a question, yes. Um, we, again, we are worried in the case where uh, a student's uh, grades might in, uh, not be strong enough for them not to worry about the rest of the course load, okay? So even though GE mods don't seem like they're computing related, they are workload related, right? So we really want you to have a very good success, okay? If you're, let's say for a year free SEM 1, and this is really your last semester to try to take your up, then we'll talk with you. Okay, and you can say, yeah, well, I really, really want to try this. Okay, uh, this is my uh, only chance to do it. Will you let me? Then we'll talk with the supervisor. Okay, the student really wants to do your out, your out with you. We're a little bit worried about uh, their progress. Can you make sure that you keep close watch on them? Make sure it's very well structured. Then we'll say, okay, yeah, sure. We would rather let you try. Okay, uh, the important thing is we want a positive experience, right? So uh, that, that's why we worry about this. On the other hand, if your first year, like I said, and you're just starting this out and you say, okay, I've just cleared barely the minimum requirements of the MCs. I issued a lot to get uh, you know, my 4.0 cap or something like that. Then there's some, some leeway. Right? If you don't do it this semester, that's okay. You, know, you can do it next semester because uh, Europe is only a year long. So you can fit it in year two, you can fit it in year three. And then uh, even in year three, if you want to do it in the second semester, that's fine because uh, you can dovetail it into an FYP later if you want, okay? Now, I, I should say this schedule is a little bit open, okay? Even though there's dates here, these are our suggested dates for you, okay? So we highly recommend that you start sourcing for supervisors now, okay? Even before it opens, why? Because you already know the semester is only gonna get worse in terms of load. Right. And that also means professors are busier, right? Because they've got a lot of assignments and midterms to give. Right. So the chances of you meeting face to face with a professor that you're interested in is going to tail off during the semester. Right. So if you want to find a good supervisor, it's important to have good rapport with that supervisor. So you should engage them early. Okay. All right. So um, how do you find projects for your own? Well, uh, the first thing is, of course, talk to the faculty. They're the ones sponsoring projects, okay? But uh, you can also propose your own projects. That's also something that you can do, right? This part here. Um, but it's most likely for research. You know, you want to use the expertise of the faculty. They've been doing in, uh, research in these areas for tens of years, right? So you're, you're relatively new or maybe uh, completely unexperienced with research, then it might be good to use their suggestions, okay? So what I would do first is go to uh, approach the faculty and you can do that by going to um, the Proj Admin uh, site, okay? Your interface looks a little bit different from mine, but this is what mine looks like, okay? So uh, for example, here are the Europe proposals uh, that are coming out this semester, okay? So you can see uh, there's reinforcement learning things uh, coming from Akshay. Uh, there are lots of uh, game development things. Uh, some of them also using procedural rendering from Anand. Uh, Brian Hui, who's one of our uh, AI faculty is talking about uh, neural network transformers for grass. Okay, um, there's some uh, more implementation and uh, research, uh, computing education research work uh, from Bimlesh, okay. Uh, and there are more, okay? So you can click in any of these and take a look. So Bin Lesh is saying, uh, maybe, you know, you can continue the previous uh, project uh, on a uh, model view, uh, sorry, a minimum viable project on a web-based application for uh, developing uh, visualizations and charts, because she's one of our 
uh, faculty that deals with information visualization. Okay, so um, a lot of that is front end work. So there's JavaScript involved, et cetera. Okay, so it really depends on what you're interested in. Now, um, here we only have about 45 Europe's, okay, uh, for uh, this semester, but that doesn't mean that only these projects are available. Why is that? Because Europe is a uh, enrichment program. It's not something that uh, faculty spend a lot of time proposing projects because we don't know the demand for Europe. Okay, so uh, what does this mean? It means that you have to do a little bit more work. So uh, I would go to all of the semesters, okay, and take a look at through all of the projects. Okay, so uh, I, you can see the ones that are already in progress, like the ones, um, these, sorry, these were already in progress. The new ones are here. Okay, so there are less of them. Okay. Uh, but you can take a look at all of these and then decide which ones are interesting to you, okay? And if there are some things that look a little bit related, but not exactly in your area, that's fine because then you can say, oh, I know this type of person, that person, she's faculty in AI, I'm going to investigate um, them in more detail. So for example, uh, let's take Umang, okay? Let's say I'm really interested in, in something like this, on um, you know, compressed traces for program execution, right? Uh, so I, I want to know a little bit more about what this faculty member does, okay? So what I'll do is I'll take his name uh, and then uh, you know, what everyone else does, <laughs> put it into Google, right? Uh, and then uh, I can find a little bit more about what, what his type of work does, right? So he's interested in formal methods and logics and he does programming languages and software engineering. So many of us have already taken software engineering at this point if you're a CS major. So maybe that's of interest to you, okay? Um, uh, most of us have like a Google Scholar page or something like that. So if you read through these citations and you say, oh, you know, some of these are, are interesting to me. Like uh, I, I, I've done concurrent programming or parallel computing. I want to do more things in this area. Then um, Umang might be the right person for you, okay? Why do I say this is because the projects are sort of indicative of a person's interests, but the interests are not just confined to those projects, okay? So if you find something like, oh, this person is working in parallel computing or distributed computing or you know, uh, race conditions and things like that, um, then if I'm interested in that, maybe I should just write to him directly, right? So I take his email address and I, I write to, uh, Dr. Mather and say, Dr. Mather, I'm a current SOC student. You know, I'm year two, year three in SOC as a biz ad student or a comp engineering student. Uh, I'm thinking of doing your up and I found some of your projects really interesting. Okay, would you mind talking to me, uh, you know, through email or maybe through a Zoom call or maybe I could come to your office and we could discuss one of your projects or, you know, uh, you know anything that might interest you. Okay, because they've enumerated some projects, but not all of the ones that they could be interested in. Okay, um, pursuant to that, you can also look through FYP. Okay, so FYP is a better way to find projects. Why? Because there are quite a bit more of them, right? So there are 95 compared to 45 Europe proposals. Many of them are the same proposals. Okay, but there are some that are new. Okay, so uh, again, my suggestion is go through both the Europe and FYP site, try to identify about maybe five to 10 faculty, okay, who you might be interested in, then go Google search those faculty, or you can actually use uh, the CS website, uh, uh, you know, the not CS, the uh, SOC website, you know, many of us think the SOC website is completely useless, but um, you'd be surprised once in a while it's useful. Okay, so like if you go to research areas and you tap on computer science, it's actually somewhat well organized. So you can say, oh, uh, I'm really interested in databases. Um, I, I want to know who's in databases and what type of uh, uh, work we do. Okay, then uh, you can take a look at this and it will actually tell you everyone, right? So these are the people that you can look at uh, to say, okay, well, they're all doing database research. Maybe I can identify people from the research areas, which be people that I, I can think about, okay? And there are lots of other ways to do it. You know, you can talk to people informally and say, who's a good prof, you know, who cares about their students, who doesn't, you know, who teaches lousy, who just uh, doesn't really worry about their undergraduate students. Okay, all these are good ways to figure out what, what's a good match for you, okay? 
So do the due diligence uh, by going through uh, the website, um, the projects, and then deciding which professors to uh, talk to. Okay. Now some of them uh, will write uh, open-ended project, uh, open-ended project. And what does this mean? It uh, really means uh, that you are allowed to propose your own project, right? So people who write open-ended projects, those are the ones who said, you know, I don't have a specific idea. I'm willing to work with the student to develop their interests, okay? So if there's a particular thing that you're interested in or you've already done it, for example, in your H3 computing when you were uh, in JC or um, even before, uh, then you can continue that by talking to those people, all right? So that's a good way of doing that, okay? So like it says there uh, at the bottom, you know, the bottom line is you have to do some work, okay? It's not like you just sign up and then we match you to someone. No, that's no good, right? Because it's two modules worth of work, right? Eight MCs. It's not a small amount of credit, okay? So it's important to do window shopping, okay? You have to go around, check, and decide, okay? So what I would suggest is, again, save, let's say, um, two two days, half days, like say an a.m. and a p.m. in two different weeks, okay? The first a.m. or p.m., you try to shortlist professors, then you write them emails, okay? And the second one, you try to uh, um, follow up, okay? Chase them if you need, okay? And then you obviously have to make time to contact them, okay? Some of them will say, okay, yeah, Zoom meeting is good. Uh, I have to find the time to do that and uh, try to allocate, okay? Now your FYP counterparts, the ones that are, that are doing projects in year four, are going to do the same phase uh, of selection as you at the same time. Europe is a little more selective, so we don't have to uh, uh, keep to a very strict timeline, but uh, that's why we have the timeline that is suggested, okay? like we wrote here, right? So if you uh, go with this timeline, many of the professors between um, in the middle of October, we'll be expecting students to query them, okay? Say, oh, you're, you're interested. Are you doing FYP or Europe? You tell them you're doing Europe and then say, oh, okay, uh, and, and so on and so forth, okay? So uh, like uh, we've already gone through, there are many of, of the different projects. These were from last semester, uh, SEM2 ones that were out there. So uh, you can see some of the ones uh, in uh, different areas. So for example, we have, uh, uh, Frank Stefan, who works more in the theory area. Uh, my area happens to be more natural language processing. We have people that uh, do uh, computer vision, for example. And uh, earlier you saw um, Anand's projects on games. Okay, and uh, uh, some of our other newer professors uh, working on graph algorithms. So lots of different projects, okay? And really SOC has a lot of very, um, a cutting edge professor. So uh, whatever you choose, uh, it's a good way to go into uh, uh, an area if you have no experience before. Okay, not that a lot of people invoke this, but it's good to know, all right? Uh, we do have support for projects, okay? You have up to $200 uh, right now from the undergraduate office to help you with your projects. So for example, if you need to buy some hardware, or uh, you need to travel, or um, actually some of our projects require you to get human, uh, other humans to help you to, like, to evaluate whether an algorithm is working well. So sometimes you see those things on Luminous or Canvas that says, you know, psychology experiment, $10 an hour or something like that, right? So some of our uh, SOC students also have to do that because they want to prove whether their, their algorithms work for human output. Okay, so some of my students are doing that too. Okay, so, um, uh, when you do that, your your supervisor can actually reimburse costs for the project uh, for you. Okay, uh, this may actually change a little bit to to offer even more support later. Uh, there are proposals that you may hear from your fellow students in science under CHS. They they have a, a enhanced Europe uh, module that may be phased in for SOC in the next year or so that combines a little bit more utility, uh, some seminars, but also more support uh, for, for the project so that if you get a paper or a publication accepted, then you can travel to the conference automatically, okay? So wouldn't it be nice to write a paper, then travel across the world, present, stay in a hotel on your own, you know, and then come back all on SOC and the government's bill, right? Because you did good work. 
Okay, and it does happen. I mean, I have students who've done, who've done that too. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much the entire um, Europe uh, briefing. Okay, we just have some extra slides to talk to you about what to look out for when you're doing Europe. Okay, again, I think a lot of students feel that like, uh, it was really worthwhile to do a Europe because you're getting individualized attention. Okay, I mean, SOC is a big place, right? You walk into a lecture hall, there are like a hundred other students with you. And even if you want to speak out, the profs barely know you. Okay, so if you want to interact with them one on one and you're thinking, okay, maybe research is sort of interesting, I don't know whether it's for me, but I was thinking of graduate school, I'm not sure about it, I want to try it out. Then really take this opportunity. You know, there are not a whole lot of schools in the world, especially in the Southeast Asia region, that can do these types of things because they don't have faculty that have this capability to do uh, cutting edge research, but we do. Okay. So, um, you know, there are lots of things that are, are really important. So, um, you know, you'll learn a lot of discipline specific work, but also lots of important things for any type of independent endeavor. Okay, so once you've done Europe or FYP, especially if it's a, a, a research oriented one like Europe, Europe is compelled to be research oriented, then you'll learn research skills and time management. Uh, and all of these are very important for doing, um, you know, real world work outside. Why? Because, you know, you're not going to get homework assignments in your job, right? They're just going to give you tasks, you have to complete them and you have to organize your time effectively. Okay. So uh, really important, uh, I, I worked with Eugene in, in our, uh, um, our, our machine learning class before he was a TA for me. And um, he said he really learned to formulate his research topic and work towards a publication. So uh, initially at the beginning of the presentation, I said that you have to work with your professor to decide the problem specification, what the problem is that you're trying to solve. And actually, once you get to that problem formulation, in my experience, it's already about one, half, one third of your project, okay? Because when you start a project, you have some notional idea of what to do, but you haven't formalized it. Like what's the given input? What's the output? What's the expected characteristics? How long, you know, it's the running time in big O, et cetera. All of those things you sort of need to um, pin down so that you have a concrete problem statement. Once you have that, then uh, the related work and everything sort of falls into place. What, things are out of scope or things are in scope, what do you have to review? Okay, so that's really important. Okay, yeah. Um, find a topic that you like, very important. Time and workload management is uh, really important. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing, uh, again, you, you do want to be careful about this. Uh, one of our other Europe students said, uh, make sure you try to choose something that aligns with what a faculty member is doing, unless you've already done research in this area. In most of us going into Europe, this is our first time doing research, so it probably makes sense to follow somebody else's lead who's done it before. Okay, but that's not to say that you can't. You know, we want to uh, enable all students of all types to do that. Okay, so here's some testimonials. You can read more of them. I only show you a couple here. Okay, like uh, uh, Prof uh, Trevor said that uh, he is very happy. He works on um, hardware-oriented AI, so spiking neural networks, no, neuromorphic computing, so um, you know, neural network on a chip. Okay, so uh, he's actually had Europe students uh, build hardware and, and software to accompany it uh, uh, as part of their uh, lab's work. So Yiding was my student. Uh, she worked on recommendation systems, you know, the things that drive Lazada, Shopee, Amazon, okay. Um, but uh, as part of that, she had a, a good experience. And actually she's presenting a paper, I think last week already presented uh, over her two years of attachment to my group. Okay, so um, there are more testimonials here. I'm just gonna skip most of them and then uh, come to the end, okay. Some of the things that uh, you can watch out for when you're doing Europe, okay. Are exchange students allowed to take part in Europe? Uh, again, if you're here for two semesters of exchange, that's fine, you can take Europe. Um, but if you're only here for one semester, you can take CP3106 independent project. Okay, this is like Europe, but it's only one semester long. Okay, why don't I recommend this to more people is because most professors, when they want to attach a student to their group, they don't mind training students, but there has to be some benefit to them as well. Okay, otherwise it's like teaching a class, all right? You're, you're teaching people, but you're not receiving any compensation 
um, in terms of help uh, in doing research. Okay? Research takes time. You have to get familiar with an area. You have to understand what um, the, the outer works that are involved. Sometimes you have to implement code. And all of that uh, takes, well, effort, right? So this is why a two-semester Europe is sort of like the, the ideal amount of time. Okay? You have enough time to work on a project, to learn, to make a couple mistakes, and then come back and, and succeed. Okay? But if you just want to taste, then you can try CP3106. Uh, independent project means that you're only evaluated by your supervisor only. Okay? It's not through an examiner. It's uh, more lightweight. But again, it's not as likely that you'll be able to achieve a good success with that. Okay? At most, what we see out of independent projects are people start to get an idea of this area of work. And if you have enough time, you can follow CP3106 up with a Europe afterwards. That's also possible. Okay? But it's most, I, the pathway that we've seen the most is students take Europe. And if they like Europe, and they want to do an FYP, they continue in FYP. Okay, then you get two years of experience, either with the same project or you in two different project areas. All looks good. Okay. Now, I've success, successfully completed Orbital this uh, past summer, but I'll only get it done uh, with the credit in SEM1. Can I count the four MCs for the 60 MCs? Again, yes, but the same caveat, like I said before, for year one students, we are, uh, or, or in this case, beginning year two students, we're worried about the amount of course load that you asked, okay, as you do. Okay. There are some other uh, small things. I won't uh, say all of them, just that uh, there, there are uh, some of these questions about uh, slots for Europe lectures. Basically, there are none. Is Europe graded on the final submitted report uh, that's archived or the one that you present? It's uh, basically on the presented Europe report that you report in um, at the uh, reading week. Okay, and uh, you don't have to give a hard copy unless uh, your examiner requires it. Okay, now a really important caveat that many people don't remember, uh, even when they started Europe, okay, you have to take it for two consecutive semesters. Okay, this is not so much a problem for you because your break, the winter break, uh, will uh, be at the beginning. Uh, you know, you register for Europe and then you can start right at the beginning of the uh, winter, but it does mean over the summertime, you are expected to work on your Europe, okay? Now, you may be thinking, well, I was planning to do internship. Uh, can I still do that? And the answer is yes, with a caveat. Your advisor must say okay, all right? By default, it's expected that your summer, you will also be doing your Europe, okay? So we want it really to be a full year's experience, okay? So um, that is actually very good. I see in my own cohort, students who are able to spend full time on their Europe during the summer, they're much more likely to get a paper and their grade for Europe is going to be usually about half a grade to a grade higher, okay? That's just because they invest more time, not that they have more smart or anything. It's just that they're more committed. They have more leeway to make mistakes, okay? So it depends on you. If uh, you think, okay, I actually want to hedge my bets. I, I'm not really, really sure I want to go to graduate school. I really think I should get um, industry experience by doing an internship. Then by all means, go ahead. Make it clear to your uh, advisor or your potential supervisor, even now when you're bidding for Europe. You know, Prof, I was thinking of taking a Europe on you, under you. Is it okay if I think about, you know, tentatively doing an internship uh, during the summer? But I'll promise that on weekends and uh, weeknights, I can do some work on Europe because I'm only going to do it 40 hours a week. So the other hours I'm free. Okay. Then they may say yes or no, uh, depending on how heavy they project the workload. And then you can schedule accordingly. It's better to be upfront about these, right? You don't want to need uh, bad blood between, oh, well, I said I was going to be committed, but actually I changed my mind. Okay. So if you are going to go for NOC or SCP, uh, then I would suggest going to take the CP3106, okay? If you're in year two, uh, then you go for NOC or SCP, then you come back, you still have time, go take Europe. If you don't have time, then go do it as FYP, okay? 
So uh, that's pretty much all the information that we want to share with you. And so now it's pretty much up for you to ask questions to us. So I'll take questions from the room. I'll take questions online. So uh, for the 16 of you online, um, if you have questions, you can just um, unmute or uh, you can write in chat. Okay.